The Archangel Metatron is considered the highest ranking being among all celestial beings, so much so that he is seated next to God even though no one could be seated in the presence of the highest. Metatron is an angel so powerful that the same God assigned his own name to this angel. According to several stories, the Archangel Metatron, the angel of the presence, is in charge of all actions that define the good and the bad in the entire cosmos. It is also said that Metatron is the eternal guardian of the mystical and enigmatic tree of life, the guardian of guardians. Metatron had so much power that he witnessed and helped many prophets on earth, and thus had the ability to punish many others. He was at the command of the highest god of the heavens, and God had so much trust in him that he was even called the lesser god, the scribe, the storyteller. In some stories, it is said that Metatron was the angel sent by God to protect and accompany the faithful to the promised land. God would have told Moses on Mount Sinai that he sent a powerful angel to guide him and that he should do everything that the luminous angel orders and for no reason to challenge or disobey him. In the Book of Enoch, the origin and evolution of the prestigious angel Metatron are described in detail. According to the writings, God chose Ishmael to step into the kingdom of heaven. During his visit, he could observe the celestial chariot called Merkaba, where God was transported, surrounded by the most powerful angels of paradise. The day long awaited by Ishmael had arrived, for he ascended to the heavens to the gates of paradise. Ishmael saw a shining light as he reached the heavens. This was the entrance to the palace of God. Upon entering the majestic castle, Ishmael realized that it was not only one but that he had entered several palaces. Palace after palace, one inside the other, and in total, he passed through six different palaces. When he reached the end of the sixth palace, Ishmael saw the immense door of the seventh palace, and feeling honored, he began to pray. Ishmael, in his prayer, said, Lord of the world, I beg you right now, make valid for me the merit of Aaron, a man who loved peace, pursued peace, and therefore received from your glory the crown of priesthood on Mount Sinai so that I may be the supreme guardian of the seventh palace. All the heavenly angels may have no power over me, and above all that, they may not cast me down from the heavens. In answer to Ishmael's prayers, the mighty God of the heavens, from his throne, sent a guardian and guide for the curious mortal. When the blessed angel arrived, Ishmael saw a heavenly light surrounding him, and just by seeing him, he felt peace. That angel servant of God was Metatron, the angel prince of the presence. When Metatron saw Ishmael, he spread his wings, and with a beaming smile on his face, he went out to meet him, driving away from him the other guardian angels who did not know of the arrival of the mortal. Metatron then took Ishmael by the hand, leading him into the seventh palace, and in a few moments, they were already in the presence of God to contemplate the heavenly chariot of the highest. Quickly, the cherubim, seraphim, and other princes that surrounded the Merkaba felt the presence of Ishmael and automatically placed a smoldering gaze on him. The eyes of those angels were so bright, like the flame that surrounded them, that they caused a breakdown, accompanied by tremors and tremors to the young visitor, which made him lose his balance in seconds. Seeing his state, God from the Merkaba said to his faithful worshippers, My servants, my seraphim, my cherubim, and my ophanim, keep your eyes before Ishmael, my beloved son, and my glory so that he stops trembling and shaking. After completing this request, Metatron quickly approached Ishmael and, as a magical act, brought him to his feet, causing him to recover his breath. However, Ishmael did not feel strong enough. After an hour, Ishmael could not even utter a song to the glorious God, as those who were close to him did. A few more minutes passed, and at last, God, from his throne, opened the doors of peace, wisdom, power, language, poetry, holiness, and music. Upon releasing several expressions of glorification, Ishmael's eyes were illuminated, and his heart felt God's true power of peace, love, and holiness. Then Ishmael opened his mouth, and with ease, began to sing a great song of praise before the throne of the highest. Below and above the throne, all the angels and others repeated, Blessed be the glory of God. As Ishmael uttered the song of praise, many of the heavenly angels who accompanied the celestial chariot approached Metatron and said, Young man, for what reason do you allow one born of a woman to come and behold the Merkaba? 
To what nation or tribe does he belong? And above all, what is his condition? Calmly, the young Metatron answered them. He belongs to the people of Israel, whom the Holy One, blessed be he, chose out of seventy nations to be his people. He went on to say, Ishmael is of the tribe of Levi, to whom it belongs to make the offering raised in his name, and of the stock of Aaron, whom the Holy One chose to exercise his ministry and to whom, by himself, he wore the crown of the priesthood at Sinai. Seraphim, cherubim, Ophanim, and other celestial beings said before Metatron and Ishmael, Truly he is worthy to behold the Merkaba. And they received him as one of their own. Upon hearing everything, Ishmael approached the angel Metatron and asked him, What is your name? Metatron looked at him with a face full of light and peace and said, I have seventy names corresponding to seventy languages existing in the world. All of them are based on the name of my king, the Holy One, blessed be he. But my king calls me young man. For Ishmael, it was all new, and he was so excited about the privilege he was receiving. He was very curious and thirsty for knowledge of everything concerning the mighty kingdom of heaven and the celestial beings that accompanied God. Then he continued with the interrogation, asking, Why art thou called by the name of thy Creator, and why by seventy names? Thou being the greatest of all princes and angels, the most beloved of all servants, the most honorable among the hosts, and the most exalted of all, why art thou called a youth in the kingdom of heaven? A few minutes of silence accompanied the moment, and so the angel serenely answered Ishmael, For I am Enoch. Metatron then began to narrate the story of his ascension to the heavens. Metatron said that when the generation of the flood was engulfed in sin and evil due to the treachery of the vigilant angels who corrupted men, God called him and then took him out from among the sinners. He took him to the winged palace of his throne where he could serve as an appointed witness against all the world's inhabitants, lest they say that the God of heaven is cruel. As punishment, he let loose a great flood on the earth. The flood swept away and destroyed all that was left on earth, the wicked and sinners, along with their estates and all the animals that remained. Metatron would be the eternal witness and the one to answer to the following generations regarding God's decisions. As some said, Though those of the generation of the flood sinned, what sin did the beasts and the birds commit, that they perished along with them? Metatron replied by saying, For this reason, God made me ascend to the high heavens and appointed me as prince and sovereign among the servant angels while the wicked and sinners lived, and before his own eyes, I could serve as a witness before the world of the future. Metatron was telling Ishmael that at that time, God had his presence on earth until the generation of sin and the ringleaders of the idolaters went all over the earth. The highest lord of the heavens decided to remove the divine presence, or Shekinah, from the earth. Then Metatron said to Ishmael, And so together with him, in his Merkaba, we ascended to the heavens. His flaming Merkaba emanated a bright light, surrounded by fire with horses of fire and servants of glory. And as we ascended, the seraphim, cherubim, the chariot wheels, and other celestial beings immediately sensed my odor and asked where such an odor came from. So God raised his voice, saying, My servants, my hosts, do not take this matter badly, for all the sons of men have disowned me and my great kingdom. They have gone to worship false idols. Therefore, I have removed my Shekinah from among them and from among all men. I have chosen this one, for he is worthy of this act of mine. Ishmael asked him how the reception was in the heavens and how such an appointment was given by the king of the sky. Metatron told him that when he entered, three of the angel's servants of God appeared before him, Uzzah, Azza, and Azel. Metatron said the three angels were puzzled and quickly attacked the chosen one of God, questioning God's reason for the arrival of this man in the heavens. God, from his throne, said that he had made his arrival in his chambers possible. Uzzah, Azza, and Azel continued to refute God's actions in front of the young man, and they all said to him, Lord of the universe, is he one of the descendants of those who perished in the days of the flood? And God answered them, And what is your condition that you should come in to speak with me? He shall be prince and ruler over you in the high heavens. The three angels arose, and turning to the man of the earth, Enoch said to him, Blessed are you, and blessed are those who begot you, for your Creator has taken pleasure in you. 
Following those words, they called him young man, or the youth, for Enoch was the youngest of all the heavenly beings in the heavens. Then God told Enoch that before appointing him as the prince and angel of the divine presence known as Metatron, he should open and show him three hundred thousand gates of intelligence, prudence, life, love, graces, humility, of mercy as well as three hundred thousand gates of fear of God. After that, God would be honored and worshipped with all the good and worthy qualities, much more than all the beings in the heavens. God then approached Metatron, placed his hand on his head, and blessed him with 5,369 blessings, after which he made Enoch grow so much that he could easily measure what was on the earth. In the majestic and divine blessing of God, from the body of Enoch came out seventy-two very radiant and beautiful wings, with thirty-six on each side, the same that represented the world's content. Consequent to such a celestial transformation, he had now become an angelic being with 365,000 eyes, and each was like an enormous star, even more significant than all the lights of the universe. He told Ishmael that when God finished with his blessing and transformation, he felt how his flesh was transformed into flaming fire, that his bones were now embers of burning broom, his eyes were changed into torches of fire, and his whole body was burning fire. To his right, flames of fire were burning. To his left, on the other hand, torches were burning all around him. A storm wind was present, and in front of and behind him, a devastating thunder accompanied him. After the remarkable transformation of Enoch, God ascended him and placed the angel on a throne at the door of the seventh palace and revealed to him all the treasures in the courts and on earth, as well as all the secrets of the universe. With his great power, God announced before the whole kingdom that Metatron was the eternal representative of God, the ruler over all the princes and all the celestial beings of the kingdoms. Finally, God and his messengers said, This is Metatron, my servant whom I have placed as prince and ruler over all. Every angel with something to say to me, you can go to him and tell him, and whatsoever he shall say unto you, you shall do it. On the throne of Metatron, prince of the divine presence, Having been delivered, the Supreme God gave him a robe of glory, with all the luminaries fixed upon it, a robe of honor, possessing every kind of beauty, splendor, and majesty, and a mighty royal crown with forty-nine stones as luminous as the sun itself. In front of all his heavenly court, he called him Metatron, the lesser God, he who bears my name, the servant. Metatron said to Ishmael that, from that time on, he would control, dominate, and command the throne of God, judge the heavenly court, and spread greatness and praise, all in the name of the King of the heavens for all eternity.